I mean, you know, this is one of those things that could invalidate the NFA. Yes. We are the Armed Attorneys. Welcome to the episode where my baby was up all night teething and I have not done my hair and do not know where my polo shirt is. Today, we're giving you an update on two cases we've talked about before. The Made in Texas suppressors case, which has wide reaching implications for the NFA generally and suppressors potentially all over the country. And the case in which Texas has said that 18, 19, 20 year olds have to be given the option to carry a handgun. But before we get started, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting the like button. And to start things off, we'll talk about Andrews v. McCraw. And this is, you know, a case that is coming to a conclusion. We've had a lot of questions from folks. Hey, I'm an 18, 19, 20 year old. Mm -hmm. When can I start engaging in Texas constitutional carry? When can I apply for my Texas license to carry a handgun? And this case is coming to a conclusion. It is. Yes. So we know, you know, we did a video on this. Texas withdrew its appeal. So we know that the district court order is going to go into effect Police in Texas cannot enforce the unlawful carry laws against 18, 19, 20 year olds. And we also have a legislative session coming up. So we'll see what the lawmakers do about all of this. But pretty soon, and I say pretty soon because this hasn't been sent back to the district court for an order yet. Pretty soon we're going to know what date this goes into effect. What's the update, though? Well, Richard. Yeah, well, the plaintiffs in this case have filed a motion to set a deadline for a fee petition. And this is essentially suing for attorney's fees. Hey, you know, you violated our rights. We sued you. We won. We want to get paid for it. And they set a deadline of February the 3rd, 2023. And this kind of tips us off. The case is coming to a conclusion. Yeah. And they're going to negotiate attorney's fees, it looks like, which is good. Sometimes you go to a sort of mini trial on attorney's fees. You bring witnesses, you bring experts, and you prove up how much you're owed. It sounds like the state of Texas is you know, sort of doing the right thing here, probably yeah. going to agree, agree to pay the their reasonable attorney's fees. Maybe the plaintiffs, for some reason, don't want to go to a train. They're missing an expert or missing a witness, and they just want to they'll waive some of what they're owed. But my guess is that the state of Texas just wants to uh, cut bait. Yeah, but we'll see that order coming shortly. The next case that we want to talk about that has implications across the entire United States is the Made in Texas suppressor case. Now, this is where, you know, the last legislative session, the state of Texas created this new law essentially trying to exempt itself from the Commerce Clause and saying, hey, uh, we are going to say that suppressors made holy in the state of Texas. Maybe there's some insignificant parts from other places, but we are not going to subject these to the NFA. We, these don't require a tax stamp. And there's a process to go through this where the attorney general for the state of Texas will sue in a federal district court in order to obtain um, injunctive relief, essentially obtaining pre-authorization saying, hey, you know, this is not affected by the Commerce Clause or violates the Second Amendment. We had all these arguments being thrown out. Um, this case has been chugging along, but this has, I mean, you know, this is one of those things that could invalidate the NFA. Yes. And just to remind you, when Texas passed this law, it was not a great law because we were in a pre-Bruin world. I mean, yeah. it was a good statement. But, um, you know, essentially courts all over the country, um, federal circuit courts had said, nah. And I mean, we know, you know, any attorney knows and anyone who's looked into these cases knows it is so hard to get around the Commerce Clause, even if you are doing something. And really, it is entirely within your own state. It should not invoke interstate commerce and hence federal regulation. Uh, the courts have basically totally blown the Commerce Clause completely out of proportion. And it's really, really hard to get around it. But what we have in our post New York State Pistol and Rifle Association versus Bruin world is this law now not being argued on Commerce Clause grounds, but instead on Bruin grounds. And we know this because there have been some filings already where, um, you know, the plaintiffs have said, look, uh, I know we filed these motions, but we have new arguments to make now and some responses from the government that essentially say, um, well, uh, great arguments, but Bruin isn't invoked because suppressors aren't arms, right? right they're <laughs> um, which is fascinating considering federal law actually defines firearm and defines suppressor as a firearm. Yes. Um, bold move. Very bold move. So we have a final deadline now for all of the amicus briefs, all of the replies. I mean, everything that's going to come in on these summary judgment motions. That date is May 2nd, 2023. Hopefully, Judge Pittman makes a fairly quick decision after that, although he does a lot of research and yes. he writes really good opinions. So 
um, you know, by the end of summer, I would hope. Yeah. And I think that's interesting. And this is why the two stories are kind of connected. It's the same judge in the northern Northern district of Texas, and he's good on the Second Amendment. So um, that's why those those two things are related. So you got to watch the Paxton v. Dettelbach case and you got to watch the Andrews v. McCraw case. We'll see something on McCraw, that McCraw case, probably, you know, early February. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Paxton v. Dettelbach case, again, looking at May for uh, all of these filings to be completed and then maybe an opinion shortly thereafter in the following month or so. So pretty exciting stuff. But if you enjoyed this discussion, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And please continue to question and comment below. Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.